Hey, it's Candace, and in today's Quick Books Tips and Tricks, we are going to talk about credit cards. So if you peruse my YouTube channel, you'll notice I have lots of videos on credit cards, but I've been asked a couple times about finance fees and interest and how to enter those in. So let's go ahead and go in and reconcile a credit card. So you've already entered all your credit card charges in our banking in a credit card charges or down here. And now we're going to go in and reconcile. So we're, I'm assuming, I'm guessing that you have a statement. You're going to choose your credit card. You're going to choose your ending date. This is my sample file. So I haven't actually used it in quite a while on credit cards. I use it basically when I create YouTube videos and my courses for you guys. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for the ending balance. So you're gonna pick the date of the ending statement date. You're going to pick a beginning balance and an ending balance. Now, if you've ever reconciled before, your last statement date should be the previous statement. In this case, they're a little off, they're a year off because I haven't created a how-to in this particular credit card in a while. So you'll notice there is a place for finance charge when you choose a credit card. Now, let me show you something. If you go in and you choose a bank account, you'll notice there's a place for a service charge and for interest. Service charge in this is for a bank account, not a credit card. So this is if the bank charges you a service fee, and this is if you get charged, if you earn interest in your bank account. But as far as a credit card is concerned, you only get one choice, and that is your finance charge. You have two options. You can either enter your finance charge here, and enter it towards your interest expense. Or technically, I'll show you real quick, you can enter it inside of the credit card. You could put it towards Capital One, finance charge. You can do either one, it's totally up to you. Now the difference is, if you do enter it in here, you can find it under the vendor. If you enter it under the reconciliation, which is fine, you just won't find it under the vendor. So just so you know the differences. So go ahead and enter that in. I just wanna give you guys clarity. Let me change all my dates because my dates got changed from closing it. All right, so then the next step is you choose your interest, you choose your class. If you have those, you click continue. You're gonna go in and you're gonna notice now over to the right, you already have a finance charge of the 32.95. Let me adjust my clear bounds, I forgot to do that, sorry. That's what I get for leaving and coming back in. What I did, let me show you what I did. This is a good example of what to do. If you notice that you're, Ending balance isn't what you wanted it to be. You modify that, click modify right there. And then you just go back in and you adjust it. So you put your beginning balance, your ending balance, the date, closing date, and your finance charge. And you click continue and it'll bring you in. Now, if you haven't reconciled in a really long period of time, I've spoke about this in other videos, but you can hit hide transactions after the statement date. If you check mark that and you have multiple transactions after your period here to the left, they'll disappear. In this case, I don't have any. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna check mark my charges. You're gonna verify those against your statement. And then on the, so the left are all your charges, on the right are all your credits and payments. Check mark those. And then you'll notice to the bottom left, you'll see beginning balance, all your payments, all your charges, those should match the numbers showing up on your statement. And then you're gonna see your finance charge and the difference should be zero. If for some reason this isn't working and I, you've gone back in, you've clicked modify, you've checked your finance charge. I did recently see somebody who had a finance charge on both sides and without actually seeing your guys' QuickBooks, I can't always give you tips. So people email me often wanting help, but the reality is I can only do so much through the YouTube. If you need one-on-one -on -one help, you can connect with me um, and find out. I'll put a link below. You can find out what my rates are for one-on-one -on -one consulting. But the reality is there's only so much I can do answering your question through email and through YouTube. If you do have a problem and you need help, sometimes people think, oh, I'm gonna fix it myself. But the truth is spending some of the money to get my help will save you a lot of headaches. I had somebody recently I was working with and he's like, I wish I would have called you at midnight. I've been up for numerous hours working on this. And I chuckled and said, well, I was sleeping at midnight, but I'm typically available I, I make sure I'm available usually a couple days a week for my one-on-one -on -one clients. And the rest of the time I spend creating these videos for you and other areas of my business. So have an amazing day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you don't need my help and you're able to just do it. But if you do, feel free to connect with me. Have an amazing day. And if you wanna get these tips and tricks, I will put a link up above and down below. And if you're looking for a course to take where you can go through Feel free to check out confidencewithquickbooks.com. It is for desktop users. 
It is not an online course as far as it's not for QuickBooks online people. See you soon. Have a great day. Bye.